and it's the third week of class. Isn't that exciting? You guys can all, you can go to Pine Street and party later. Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Vunga Wagnall, attorneys at law, have been asked to represent a local client in proceedings to be held in San Francisco, California. Required, classify each of the following items on the basis of their relationship to this engagement. Items may have multiple classifications. So we've got relevant costs, irrelevant costs, opportunity cost, and outlay just refers to the laying out of money. Uh, outlay sunk, okay? So, number one, we'll go to Erica. Are you excited? She should be. Uh, the case will require, now recognize we're talking about attorneys going to San Francisco. So that's the context. The case will require three attorneys to stay four nights in a San Francisco hotel. The, predict the predicted hotel bill is $1,200. Erica, relevant or irrelevant? Relevant, is it an opportunity cost or an outlay? Are you asking me? Yes. yes, it is an outlay. Because it's not an opportunity cost, is it? It's not something they're giving up, really. So it is an outlay. They've got to spend 1200 bucks. That's real money that's going to really go out, go out of their pockets. Victoria, number two. Funk and Wagnall's professional staff is paid $800 per day for out-of-town assignment. Relevant. Relevant outlay opportunity. Relevant outlay, it is. How exciting. Isn't this exciting? Alex, you're next. Number three, last year depreciation on Funk and Wagnall's office was $12,000. Um, irrelevant sunk. Irrelevant sunk. Jim Evans, number four, round trip transportation to San Francisco is expected to cost $600 per person for the engagement. It's relevant. Relevant outlay. Jackie, who knows she's coming next. Uh, is going to get asked, the firm has recently accepted an engagement that will require partners to spend two weeks in Dallas. The predicted out-of-pocket costs for this engagement or of this engagement are $8,500. Irrelevant. Irrelevant outlay. Char, who probably knows that she follows Jackie, is, beside, be, is, is next after that because she knows because I told her like a class period or two ago. The main, uh, number six, the firm has a maintenance contract on its word processing equipment that will cost $2,200 next year. Is that relevant or irrelevant? Mm -hmm. Irrelevant, outlay sunk. <coughs> outlay, because they haven't spent it yet, outlay. Stephanie Harris, number seven, and she looks really excited to to, to have the opportunity to do that, to, to, to answer number seven. It's the one, it looks like the one with almost the most number, number of words. If the <laughs> firm accepts the engagement in San Francisco, it will have to decline a conflicting engagement in Orlando that would have provided net cash inflow of $7,200. Relevant opportunity costs. And it also tells us something kind of important. If they go to San Francisco, how much do they really want to make sure they make? At least $7,200, okay? Very good. Catherine Higdon, number eight, the firm's variable overhead is $4, $40 per client hour. Relevant outlay? It's actually a relevant outlay in this case because variable overhead in this case is if they go to San Francisco and work, they're going to incur charges of $40 per client hour work. That's what that's telling us. So it is actually relevant outlay. Matthew Hutchinson, number nine, the firm pays $150 per year for Mr. Funk's subscription to a law journal. Irrelevant outlay, or it could also be irrelevant sunk as well, because uh, uh, the, these items can have multiple classifications. And in this case, we don't know when they paid it or when they're going to pay it. So it could be either or or both but not neither, because it is irrelevant. Brandon Canoy, number 10. Uh, that would be irrelevant. What is it? Last year, the firm paid $7,500 to increase the insulation. Irrelevant, sunk. Has absolutely nothing to do with going to San Francisco, does it? No. Not a thing. Wow. Awesome. Wasn't that fun? Funk and Wagnall. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Kind of a cool name. 
I thought so. Frodo Company. Number the next one, Frodo Company. And so what book is this from? Lord of the Rings. Although you probably think of it as from the movie, don't you? Has anybody read the books? Really? How many people have watched the movie? Wow. Wow. I've read the books multiple times, and I've not seen the movies multiple times. Books are always better than the movies. Always. Huh? Always. Well, nobody can make you read. And books can't make you watch the movie either. Uh, machine, ah, Frodo Company. If you read, uh, Brett, how are you? Good. Brett, if we look at, on Frodo, are you on the Frodo Company page? I am. Awesome. So it says Frodo Company, relevant costs, and then what? In all capital letters down there. Machine replacement. Machine replacement. He is a very good reader. Now, if you want to look back on uh, before page 100, the last page I gave you notes where I said, where I gave you the notes in a nutshell. What page? 98, page 98. Go back and look there. What is, what is, what's it say right beside number one there, uh, Brett? Machine, does that sound familiar? It does. Look at that. For this particular chapter, I label every type of problem. Okay, so here, this one is a machine replacement problem. You're going to find all, every label that I, is at the top of a problem is on that list. How cool is that? Isn't that cool? So, Frodo Company, we've got an old, what's going on here is they've got an old machine. They've got a machine that's doing work for them, and they're thinking about buying a new machine. Okay, so we, wa we want this, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm not being more exciting. Um, we want to make the decision, what will change? So we want to identify what costs are going to change and be relevant if we make a new, if we buy a new machine. So what's going to change? What, what's going to happen? What's going to change if we buy a new machine? And you get to go first, Heidi. <coughs> the, operating the operating cost. What's going to happen there? Um, the one machine is going to be part time and part Okay. Okay. And so what is the difference? $55,000. $55,000. Cody, do you see where she got that number? No? Do you see the annual operating cost line? Yes. Do you see that $15,000? Okay. And so do you see how many years we're going to use the machine for? Five. So 15,000 times five is? 75,000, actually. And you do that same calculation for the new machine. That gives you 20,000. So the difference between that 75,000 and that 20,000 is this $55,000. Okay? So make a note to yourself, not only Cody, but everybody else who may or may not know exactly where that number came from. Make sure it's in your notes. Uh, Aubrey. Is that a kind of a good number? Is that a number coming in or a number going out? Is that kind of a savings or a cost? Or a in or an out? Or good or bad? However you want to think about it. It seems like it would be a good thing. And so that means it's going to be a, we're going to leave it on the board as a positive number. Number, money coming in. Good, good numbers are going to be positive, bad numbers, if you will. Uh, outflows are going to be negative. Scott Musgrave, you are next. Next. 